Hello, and welcome to the Inside EVs podcast for January the 1st, 2021. This is episode number 39. Today, we'll be talking about the electric vehicles that will debut this year, 2021. I'm Dominic Kioni, Inside EVs editor and Inside EVs forum moderator. Joining us today, we have Tom Malogny, Inside EVs editor and host of the YouTube channel State of Charge with Tom Malogny, which has a strong focus on home charging station re reviews. We also have Martin Lee with us from the EV News Daily podcast, which is available on all your usual platform or podcast platforms. And of course, we have Kyle Connor from Out of Spec Studios. Uh, he has a family of YouTube channels, and he puts together the superb videos for the Inside EVs YouTube channel. Go subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications. Uh, welcome, gentlemen of the panel and ladies and gentlemen of the audience. Uh, yes, we have a bunch of vehicles to talk about coming out this year and that are pretty exciting. So let's talk about, let's start uh, with the one that's probably the, well, it's a, depending on what kind of vehicle you like, it could be the most exciting. And and, and also in some ways, like the, old, the oldest one too. This, we're talking about the Model S Plaid, okay? Finally, it's, this could be the year, right? It's coming. 520 miles, maybe $140,000. Tom, you look like you're dying to tell us about this. <laughs> I'm not as excited as many people seem to be about the Model S plan, to be honest with you. I think the, the current Model S is more than fast enough. I know that's maybe sacrilegious to say. Uh, and I think going 400 miles per charge is also more than far enough when you consider that Tesla has a fantastic supercharger network that basically can get you wherever you need to go. Uh, so, you know, I'm not uh, as, 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 as hyped up about this as many people seem to be, and probably not as excited as Kyle uh, would be because I'm not going to take this out on a, a track as soon as I can possibly get my hands on one and just thrash it around and see, you know, how, how, how much it performs. So, you know, why, why don't we let Kyle talk a little bit about this? Uh, I think it's great that Tesla keeps improving on their products. Don't get me wrong. That's the big thing here. They just are obsessed with making their cars faster and drive further. So that's great that Tesla keeps pushing the needle. Lucid came out and was like, oh, we've got a car that's going to be faster, go further. And Tesla's like, well, we see your air and up you a plaid. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I think that's great that Tesla's doing it, but this isn't a vehicle that I would buy personally if I was interested in a Model S. Kyle, right. tell me I'm wrong. Well, I think value for dollar, you're wrong because this is uh, by far the best value Model S that we've seen in terms of dollar per range as well as dollar per uh, you know performance. A, a Model S P100D in 2017 was a $165,000 car. And that car was worse in every measurable category than this. Now, the big thing we're not talking about yet, and we because we don't know this was filmed in advance, we don't know why Tesla shut down the production line. We don't know if this means there is a Model S refresh. We don't know uh, if the Plaid is even going to be based off of the current Model S architecture. We can guess that there will be some changes. We can guess that this will have the new battery pack in it with the giant cells. Uh, and so I think that the technical aspects excite me more than the raw performance. I think Model 3 is a great performer. I don't think the Model S needs to be a track monster. I think you're asking too much of a big and heavy car. It's not the use case. You're not going to see people taking Model S's to the track all the time, but you'll see them taking $55,000 Model 3 performances to the track because that's a lot easier number to, to swallow if you stuff it in a wall than $150,000, $160,000 Model S and you'll still get the same experience. So I'm quite excited about this car and um, who knows, we'll see. We'll definitely do our range testing. We'll do our acceleration. We'll do our performance testing. I'll have a full track review, of course. Uh, are we gonna find a spot to do the 200 mile an hour top speed? Perhaps we can find a runway. Would be really cool to to try this thing out and push it to the limits. So this should have the new the new battery, the 4680 cells that uh, Tesla is, is uh, manufacturing already in their um, uh, pilot facility. And but as you can see, this is this is a picture from the Tesla website. It looks exactly the same as a traditional Model S. If there's, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's any differences. I couldn't find any. Maybe the wheels. Maybe no. Not. There's no know. differences on the configurator, but I don't believe that's what it will look like. Oh yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. I think it'll be a little bit wider. I think they're going to make changes to it. Um, we'll have to see. I, hmm. Can I just give a mention to that somebody somewhere in the world right now working for Tesla has not slept in weeks because, you know, it's so funny. It's so clear that Lucid came out with a bunch of specs and Elon slash some senior management person, probably Elon Musk, um, came up with these set of numbers that we see on screen and said, you've got a year to go make this car. Because if they could make this car now, they would, right? So what I love about Tesla so much, like they did with the Roadster, they announce stuff that they can't make today, but so confident are they in their roadmap that they know they can make it in a year's time. And I, I love that, but I wouldn't want to work for that company because it would be... <laughs> It but must just be a grind. Just I think it, I think you, know, you get up in you, you get up in the morning and you're like, "What's Elon tweeted today? Oh crud! I've got to go make <laughs> one of these." But that must you know, if you're in that part of your career or your you know, if you're in Silicon Valley and you're in in you know, there's probably very few more exciting companies to work for than when the boss says, "And you know, and not unlimited amounts of money, but certainly close to unlimited amounts of money with the the, the raises that they've been doing to take advantage of this stock price." They've got the money to go spend to go do it, and they do it really well every time they do stuff like this. So that's great. But someone somewhere has not slept in weeks. <laughs> well, I, I think they actually announced the, the more or less the specs before the Lucid Air numbers are out. I, I kind of think they're, I think they're, you know, not trying to match their competitors so much. I mean, they're already, already forward looking, you know, future targets. So, yeah. I'm going to disagree with you there. Lucid okay. came out like three days before with 517 miles of range. Tom right. and I both said there is no way Tesla will have 516 miles of range. It's going to be more no matter right. what. And yeah. it's more. And the same as the, the same with the quarter mile time as well. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's just a smidge better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how about last year when Porsche? Um, you know, put the Taycan out on Norberg. Right. Like Tesla had to immediately cobble together like a half-built vehicle yeah. and send it over there to try to beat the Taycan's time. Of course, it didn't. It, it it didn't even complete the course. I don't think they had to tow it out. Um, but you know, that's Tesla. You know, they they as soon as the competition s lists anything that might be better, they've got to respond to that. And I was, uh, um, I was there during the Nurburgring uh, testing for the Model S. And uh, it was really cool to watch it go around the track. And I, I, I remember, I don't know the exact numbers offhand, but I remember being extremely impressed with how well that car looked on mm. the road. It looked super dynamic, pretty stiff, but soft enough to absorb over the bumps. We watched it go around the track a few times, and it was, it, I was really blown away uh, by that whole project. Speaking of Porsche, something we should mention just uh, while we're here early in oh, the yeah. show, um, I'm going to drive a prototype uh porsche here in the next couple days after you see this show and uh i can't tell you anything about it other than it's a porsche that's electric that you can put your dogs in the back of and so, so if you have any questions let me know so we we can say we can say words but you can't either nod or <laughs> deny it's but the same can't... problem as the mach e Oh, we can't well, wait to see that. And it's just, well, it's, it's, it's good that Porsche are driving it forward. Because as good as Lucid, like, I love Lucid so much, but no one's heard of them. Like, the four of us and everyone watching has heard of Lucid. But in the, in the wider world, a brand like Porsche, uh, it puts its, you know, its money where its mouth is. It's so, so important to electric vehicles in terms of the wider adoption and how people who don't care about cars perceive electric vehicles that you need oh. the halo car right you need something to aspire to and the tycon's expensive porsche and people give it you know crap for being expensive but the thing is porsches have never been the value option i don't know why no. people are surprised the tycon's so expensive uh it is no. the best driving electric car in the market uh i i, I absolutely love the tycon uh by the time you see this i would have spent quite a bit of time in a tycon 4s by now so, um, you know, it's, it's all around fantastic car, great charging curve and all, you know, I, I, I guess you just need something to aspire to. So, so while we're talking about Porsche, do they have anything coming up this year? I don't have them on my list, but I well, think I might've missed something. Yeah. Well, the Macan electric is in the plans and that's going to be the big one. And I can tell you, that's not what I'm driving. Uh, but so you have, one, is is I don't one? know, but it's, at least we'll hear more about it in 2021. Right. Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's going to be like a, a big, big car. Yeah. 
that's their value SUV. I mean, I, I always say Porsche is not the cheapest. They're not the cheapest CUV, but it is one of the easier Porsches to step into. You know, their fifty thousand right. dollar base price. Uh, we'll see what the, the electric PPE? is. Is that on the PPE platform? You know I don't know what platform it will be built on. Right, there is a renderer of it, so it could look something like that, maybe. It looks, looks just like, like a normal made. Macan. With the Tycon headlights. Tycon headlights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, when you're rendering photos, you know, you got to take what you know and then, yeah, extrapolate from there. Mm. All right. So, so because the Porsche also has the, but the Tycon Cross Turismo, and is that coming out for 2021? Anyone know? Yes. It yep. is? Okay. That's, that's not on my list. So well, it's a variant of sorry. the Tycon. It's the same car, right? It's it, it, there it's will be no technical like differences, more. right? It's higher. Just, uh, I don't. Like an inch? I think you can you can spec a like an off roady one or a road going one, like kind of like you can get the Audi all road wagons. Uh, I think they'll have one with plastic cladding, but that's the one that I think most people are going to get. Um, up here on the YouTube screen, which is the same yeah. thing as a Tycon, just with a long roof and a hatchback, which is, that's what you want. Let's be honest. It looks better, and you can put the dogs in the back. It does look cool. Think- although, although Audi e-tron GT, it looks beautiful as well, and is out yeah. next year. Oh, we'll get yeah, to that. this is better. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> Actually, so yeah. Uh, so this will have very similar to Porsche Tycon um, numbers, I guess. The same thing, this two-speed rear end. Yeah, there should be no technical differences. If we look at how Porsche has done the Panamera, which is its closest sibling, they're identical. It's just, yep. do you want one that's less practical or do you want one that looks better and is more practical? And you can yep. choose. Okay. Well, speaking of more practical and better looking, uh, Martin's pulled up the Audi e-tron GT, which is just yes. entered production. Yes. And this is, again... Like under underneath the skin is the Porsche Taycan, probably tuned down and maybe just a little softer, maybe slightly uh, towards the uh, what do you how do you call that Grand Tour type of uh, approach. In uh, typical Audi fashion, they've tuned it to understeer everywhere. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just making this up, but that would be fun. This. You haven't driven this I, yet. I, I mean, no. just it started life as the as the the same as the Porsche Taycan. And right. then the Audi team and the Porsche teams have gone away and done their thing. So uh, it, by no means is it exactly the same car as the Taycan. Yes, it's 800 volts. Yes, it shares a lot of parts. But no, it's a different. Mm. Whereas the Taycan has a two different battery sizes. This is a one battery size that it's halfway between them. And okay. it's it's out it's Audified. You know, it's, it's its own car. I've seen people call it, oh, it's like it's the Taycan rebadged with Audi. Not at all. It might have started, but then it forked right. off. And Audi have done their thing with it. And I think it's going to be a very compelling different car to the Taycan. Tycon and it's Audi, so it's going to be cheaper than Porsche. Oh, my. not by a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. It's like a nice, di- distinctive look from the Tycon. You know that you're not going to mix the two up in the parking lot. That uh, doesn't. Martin, you think it'll be less than the 4S than the Tycon 4S? Oh, good yeah. point. I, I, I'm not yeah, so sure. Not. You know, I'm not so yeah. sure. Um, but it, it's going to be. You know, I think it's going to be similar. And I think it's going to give people two great options. You know, uh, yeah. it's a great car. Like Kyle was raving about it before. I agree 100. percent I've had a, a, the opportunity to drive the Taycan on a few occasions now, over many hundreds of miles. And um, you know, I, I think it was the best driving electric car that I've ever driven, including the Teslas. Uh, you know, it's it's really a fantastic electric car, and I expect this to be the same. A little bit. Perhaps um, the suspension and everything is going to be tuned a little bit more for comfort than the than the the Taycan is. Uh, but uh, listen, th- these are going to be two fantastic options if you've got that hundred hundred and twenty thousand dollar coin and 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 this is the type of vehicle you're looking for. Uh, I I wouldn't buy a single gas powered vehicle over either of these two vehicles. They're fantastic uh, cars. Even though I haven't driven this yet, I'm sure Audi's going to do a great job with it. I don't think there'll be many people in between the Audi and the Porsche. I think you're a Porsche guy, right? You got the 911 in the garage. You got the Heritage. You're getting the Taycan. If you look at numbers on paper, I think you'll get the Audi. Right. Or you could get this other car on our list, the Lucid Air sedan 
517 miles of range, $95,000. Man, it's hard to hard to look at that uh, eat. and the performance is is crazy as well, right? It's kind of hard to look at that uh, each one GT and think, oh, but but then again, you know, I prefer the the uh, I prefer the Audi's looks, but that's yeah. that's me. Mm -hmm. uh, Agreed. Yeah, but this on, on paper is just insane. That's what I was going to say. Insane range. Uh, it it does everything that that Tesla has been doing for so long, and it does it so well, which is it wins the on paper wars. The I have more range than you. I'm faster than you. I can do X, Y, Z. I can charge it 300 plus kilowatts. Uh, again, we don't know the charging curve yet, but this okay. is going to be a big year for us. Uh, Tom and I both testing Lucid's. I'm sure on many occasions, range testing, we're going to try and get every version. Charging testing, it's going to be an insane year of, of Lucid versus Plaid Model S, all the comparisons. It's going to be a blast. I think Lucid are entering the market at a really, really tough time because... For so long, Tesla have had it their own way. There's been a million examples of where someone has been, you know, a Mercedes driver, BMW driver, Audi driver, Porsche driver all their life, um, and but have ended up buying a Tesla because they've got in it and been like, well, this is amazing. Like, this is the future. This is awesome. Like, and you go and blame them for that. But this is the year, 2021 is the year now, where if you have driven a series of those vehicles, and now you want to go electric and stay with the brand that you like, you now have a choice. And I think it makes Tesla's job pretty hard, but they'll be fine because they're making all their numbers from threes and whys. But I think Lucid enter the market at a really tough time because they haven't established themselves yet. So they haven't got the numbers to back them up. They've got one factory making quite small numbers. Support's going to be a question mark. And if you're not living in a like a major West Coast or East Coast, and certainly here, you know, where I am, they will sell them internationally. They will sell them Europe and UK. But it's it's this is a tough, tough ask for Lucid to get money out of people, apart from that first tranche of early adopters. What do you think? Absolutely. You know, when Tesla first launched the Model S, there was no Audi e-tron GT. There was no Porsche Taycan. There was no Model S or Model S Plaid that they had to compete with. And now there's three vehicles that are right in their wheelhouse, perfectly aligned with what, with, with what they're doing that are from established brands. Now, Tesla is an established brand now. So yeah, I, to that extent, I agree hundred percent, but you know, it's, it's, it's only going to get harder from here on out. It's going to be even harder if you bring a, a new EV to market next year and the year after Martin. So, you know, Hey, that, that's good that there's competition and let the strongest survive. I, I think Lucid is going to make it uh, because I think they're doing, uh, you know, I think they're really pushing the envelope and doing stuff that nobody else is doing. I mean, it, the, the, this vehicle has, uh, you know, as, as Kyle said, on paper, uh, it charges faster. It has the longest range. It, it has the most interior volume. It, you know, it just, you know, they're bringing LiDAR in, 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 into, you know, it's going to be the first production car, I guess, available in the U.S. with LiDAR, unless maybe somebody's coming out between now and then. I'm not sure. But they're really pushing the envelope. It's not like they're doing what Mazda did and said, OK, you know, here's our electric car. They, they actually really are giving us something that is cutting edge. And I think it's just enough to help Lucid get established. I, I think, yeah. um, you know, we're early enough where there aren't that many cars on the market that's just going to, you know, overwhelm them. This is still really early in the EV game. So I think they're going to do okay. I think they, I think this is unique enough for Lucid to, to have a niche. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when you're launching a new, a new company like this product is, is everything. And, uh, and they, and you can't just it can't just be like a beautiful, better looking car that didn't work out so well for Fisker. We can we can see it has to have some you know uh, technological advances, and this does. It has a super efficient and very small electric motors. Electric the, the powertrain is like small. The battery is uh, uh it's done differently. It's engineered differently than any other batteries I believe that we've seen so far. They do the batteries for the Formula E cars. Um, yeah, I think they have a really good chance of getting established with this, and they 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 finished their their plant, the Amp One plant out in the desert of uh, where is that again? In Arizona, I believe. 
Casa Grande, Arizona. Casa Grande. Casa Grande, yes. And they have, uh, that's going to put out like 30,000 vehicles a year once they're, once it's, they're up to speed. And so it's a matter of seeing whether they can do that. And then, you know, if they get uh, the good sales and if they, if they can have the uh, decent reliability and, and customers are happy, you know, uh, their next vehicle is an SUV and it, it could really kind of open the door and make Lucid uh, like a household name, like Tesla somehow. It seems like a big ask to get up to her. But uh, yeah, they do have some good product. I don't know, Martin, you have any, anything you want to say about this before we move on? The cars are stunning. And it's a tough job now to go to market um, with uh, with so much competition around. So, you know, I wish them, my goodness me, I wish them so, so well, because technologically, I'm so impressed. Um, but I'm I'm more cautious simply because um, the market has has moved on. Um, and that's not to say Tesla had an easy ride. They definitely didn't. But they, there were no, some benefits to being first yeah um, some benefits to being first and this is this could it could easily be a car which which doesn't work simply because it doesn't find its its place in the market and that my only what that's my only worry right all right so uh, let's move on to the mercedes eqs another sedan 300 plus miles over a hundred thousand dollars production starts uh, in the first half of the year um, it looks like a, like a Model S competitor, I guess you could say. Also a Lucid Air competitor. I'm not sure. It's the first, I, I believe it's the first uh, Mercedes EQ that's going to be on a, uh, a dedicated electric platform. So, right. you know, there's got, uh, it's not going to be a compromised vehicle, at least underneath. And as you can see in the picture, if you're looking at this, it's, it's going to be plenty aerodynamic. Uh, will it be exciting? Uh, should be pretty decent. It should be a nice riding machine. Mercedes are nice. I don't know if they've got the excitement around it that you know so many other cars do. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that. Any, anyone have anything they want to say about this? Well, the S Class has always been the top dog for the entire automotive sector. All of you know, new safety features have been uh, displayed on S Class. It's always been the leader of technology. And if this car is not the leader of electric vehicle technology by the time it comes out, it does not follow in its heritage of being an S Class. And I fear that that might be the case. So we'll just have to wait and see. Right. Hmm, should be interesting. And uh, so Mercedes also has the EQA and EQB coming out this year. The EQA uh, production has already started for that, but it's uh, I believe it's like a built on the same thing as the GLA, which is like so it's a it's a uh, compact crossover. Mm. Um, it's manufactured. In, it's going to be manufactured in Germany and China, both single uh, single motor front wheel drive and dual motor all wheel drive. So that's kind of Kind of sucks that it's not rear wheel drive when it's only mm. uh, two wheel drive. You know, it's front wheel drive, as Kyle likes to remind us, is is no no bueno. <laughs> yeah, you gotta want a lot of torque and front wheel drive, and somehow the only car I think that's ever made that work is the Mini Cooper SE. <laughs> right, or the Spark EV. Um, uh, no, that just roast tires everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it is cool. It is it's cool. fun. It's fun. Um, if you don't know, that's what I drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway, so EQA, yeah, I'm not super excited. I don't think it's coming to the US, is it? I haven't seen it. Well, we don't get the A class as is. I don't see yeah. why we'd get this one. No. Right. How about the GLB? Do we get the GLB? We, that's we get the GLA, which is kind of the same thing as a GLB. Uh, so, yeah, we'll probably get that one. But we okay, also so don't get the, we don't get the EQC, which right, is. We don't get so many come on alphabet soup freaking mercedes yeah, we don't we don't get eqc here and i don't think there are any plans to bring it to the us yeah i don't think they're going to yeah. do it i don't no. it's not it's not going to be competitive with which would be a really good up. car for here to get the glc electric here because you have all of the uh you know sort of middle upper class suburban areas i'm thinking new jersey long island that would just that people just want the mercedes badge and they'd be able to to drive around in their their mercedes suv i think it would be a big seller 
And I mentioned for the van as well, the EQV, because oh, I love that one. Oh, that's true. you know, there's a million airport runs waiting to be done on battery electric power. And that car, again, or hotel shuttles, they just want that Mercedes badge at the front of their four or five star hotel. And that's going to have so it's expensive. But again, you know, Mercedes are doing it big, big year for Mercedes Benz. So, yeah, this is the EQB, like you, you see on your screen there if you're watching this on YouTube. And that's going to be produced in Hungary and uh in, in this year 2021 um looks ugly 60, in this photo it, it starts like it yeah i mean uh, yeah I, but uh, the gas one actually looks pretty good if you get all the amg bits like the styling packs and stuff i actually okay. like the, the boxy suv ones yeah, yeah the glbs is what they it call doesn't it doesn't quite it doesn't quite strike me it just looks like i like it like soft or like it squares this is like a weird compromise it i don't know it just doesn't feel right to me but it comes well, the point with of a... camouflage is to make it ugly <laughs> that's, that's good point, good that's point. True. so it comes with a 60 kilowatt hour battery so not a huge range but i believe they might be uh, an optional battery maybe up to as much as 110 kilowatt hours which would would give you probably uh 300 miles i guess at least uh, so that would be great um so kyle you think this is coming to the u.s uh, I hope so. Look, the, the GLB I've been seeing up here in Colorado, it's sort of okay. an entry level, but upmarket badge, all wheel drive, uh, you know, crossover front wheel drive base platform, of course. Uh, electric is great. You know, we have these these towns like where I live here in Fort Collins that are really going to electric mobility. The town's putting in a ton of charging stations. This would be a great car for around here. Uh, you know, it's it's it fits all classes of people from uh, college students all the way up to grandmothers who just want something safe to, to travel around in. That's stylish. So well, I, I think it would be a win. Safe and oh. stylish. You've, you've ah, segued into that. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, okay. What do we have on the screen? The <laughs> Volvo XC40 Recharge P8. Yes. But, and so, yeah, I, managed, I was at the launch of this and I got to sit in it and it's, you know, beautiful car to look at, I think. I, see, I love the way this looks. Maybe it's because it doesn't have any camo on it. Um, and, you know, nice materials inside. It feels, you know, well screwed together. Um, but, Kyle, you've driven this. Uh, I was the first about it anymore. to have driven it, but Tom drove it. But I will uh, say this is on our very short list to enter our garage this year. Okay. Uh, and, and even for me, it really comes down to, uh, you know, I, I've sat in XC40 recharge. I've driven XC40 internal combustion version. I love yeah. everything about it. It's the right size. It's got the right tech. It feels really well. It's a Volvo. You know, I'm a Volvo guy. Uh, it's just, is it a good electric car? And the answer is not looking to be so good. Same thing like we talked about last episode about the Polestar 2. This seems to suffer from the same cold weather charging and efficiency problems. Tom, you yeah. had it in cold weather. How was it? Yeah, so um, I love how the XC40 Recharge looks. I, I think it's one of the nicest looking vehicles on the market. Not just electric vehicles, vehicles in general. I, I love how it looks. Interior is comfortable. The, uh, the Android uh, system worked really well. Um, uh, what Kyle's talking about is the inefficiency, basically. And I rec I realized, uh, I noticed that too. I couldn't help but notice it. Uh, you know, this doesn't have, uh, what is it, the EPA range? Is it 222 or 228 or 208? Or is it just... 200. I, I forget exactly what it was. Right. Oh, it yeah. might be 208. The Polestar was 222, right? Uh, and, and right. This, is this is less efficient. And this is 208, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's the same car underneath the like CMA platform. Yeah. In my, in my, in my, I only drove it about 40 miles, but the efficiency was absolutely horrendous. And I didn't pound on it. Uh, I think in cold weather, it's going to be really hard to get 170 miles out of this. Really hard. Um, and that hurts it because it's a luxury vehicle. It costs a lot of money. It starts yeah. at 55,000 here in the U S it's like 54, 998 or something like that. And, well then plus tax and, uh, plus, right. uh, delivery. Yeah. I think, I, I, I think that the, the, after delivery, it's, it's like $15 less than 55,000. And I say that because New Jersey has the, the rebate that's, that you, uh, is, is capped at 55,000. So this actually would qualify by $15. If you don't only if get, you get black. Yes. If you don't get any options whatsoever. And I, <laughs> I, I think that almost none of these are going to arrive in dealerships 
without anything put in it. You know what I mean? So, so I, I would imagine that it's not very few if anybody in New Jersey is going to get the $5,000 rebate. So now you're talking about, you know, with options or whatever, this is a $60,000 vehicle that can't go 200 miles per charge. Now, a lot of people are going to, uh, you know, are, are fine with that. And I, I know I'll get blasted in the comment section. People will be talking about, you know, oh, you know, that's fine. You charge it at night. And I know that for plenty of people, you can live with a, a 200 mile. Listen, I, I drove 100 mile EVs for like 10 years, just fine. But I, I think we're getting into a different type of people now, not early adopters. The people that are going for Volvo XC40 rechargers are going to be people that are Volvo customers that go back to the deal, their lease is up, and then the dealer wants to put them in another Volvo. And they say, hey, look at this shiny new object that we have here. It's all electric. This is the future of Volvo. Mm. And then, you know, they're going to realize that they, you know, maybe they do lease it and, and they could be disappointed in, in the winter. If you drive this thing, you know, kind of hard, you'll have the heat on all the time. You, you know, you'll, you're sitting in the parking lot and just letting the heat blast for a while before you drive while it's, while it's turned on, you might get 150 miles. Uh, you know, I mean, my, my, um, uh, you know, uh, efficiency numbers on this were like two miles per kilowatt hour while I drove it. Like, I mean, this was bad. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, I didn't really hammer it. I also, um, wasn't able to charge on an electrify America charging station. I tried to do a DC fast charge test and it simply won't communicate with, with, uh, um, with the charging station. I tried multiple times. I reached out to Volvo. I also reached out to Electrify America and uh, Volvo said, yeah, we recognize that uh, sometimes it has communication problems with Electrify America stations. And Electrify America said, yeah, we understand that there's problems and uh, hey, we're waiting for Volvo to give us a car so we can uh, see what's wrong. So it, I'm you know, pretty sure it's only with the Signet units. And I think uh, Energica motorcycles suffer from the same communication protocol uh, it, it, issue. It could be, mm -hmm. but I buy one of these. I don't care if it's a Sigma unit, oh, or sure. a unit, yeah. or whatever unit. I, you know, I'm 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 relying on this this Electrify right. America network to get me to where I need to go, and I plug in, and the thing just spins and says, you know, charging error. So. Um, bad on Volvo for not having this taken count. I'm going to blame Volvo, not Electrify America, um, because I believe that if Volvo had sent them the uh, vehicles in, in enough time, they would have tested them on all of the uh, on, on all of their, their equipment to make sure they're all work. I've had enough conversations with Electrify America now to know that, they're, that they, 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 their MO is, look, send us your vehicles as early as possible and we promise they'll work on all of our stations by the time the vehicle launches. If you mm. don't give us the vehicles, we can't test them. And it seems like that's the case with, with this, that, you know, Electrify America is just kind of like, hey, look, look, we'll get it to work. No problem. We just need a vehicle. So, um, you know, uh, that that's a big negative, if you ask me. Uh, on a vehicle that doesn't go mm. that far, it better damn well work when you plug it into a charging station. Because totally agree. You know, you know, if it's if it's if, if it's you know 400 miles, I mean, you want it to work no matter what. But you know, if if the vehicle has 400 miles of range, you can you you can kind of make that work. But this, right. you, you'll need to DC fast charge this on any kind of road trip because at, at highway speeds in colder weather, I don't think you'll feel comfortable going more than 140, 150 miles between DC fast charge stations because. Customers don't want to bleed it down to 5% charge. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Kyle and I, we do our range tests. We roll into charging stations at like zero, you know, and, and, but the average person, once they get under 20%, you know, they start right. gripping the wheel a little tighter. They start staring at that range meter. The anxiety level goes up because this is new. And um, so, you know, it better just work. So I'm, I'm disappointed in the efficiency. I'm disappointed that I couldn't get it to charge. I uh, love the vehicle. I love the, the UI. I love it. Super comfortable. Looks great. Fast as hell. This felt as fast as my Model 3. I'm telling you. Right. It, 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 you know, right. I, I don't know what the acceleration numbers are. I know it's 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 similar, but punching it at like 20 or 30 miles an hour and, and, and bringing that up to 60 miles an hour, I'm telling you, this would keep right up with my Model 3. This is 4.9 to 60. There you go. It's quick. Cool. It, it was fast. This, this, this thing hauled. Right on. So that's at least it has that going for it because you know I'm looking at the so also coming out this year is the Audi Q4 e-tron and the and also in sport back mode the coupified version. 
uh, 270 miles or, or, so, or so of range and $45,000, man, it's kind of hard to look at. I mean, as much as I like the Volvo and everything, the numbers of the e-tron q4 and that's basically built it's the audi version of the volkswagen id4 so man it's kind of and unfortunately we don't see the id4 yet in its uh, production form it's still covered up in the camo and uh, so it's kind of hard to judge if, how you know how it's going to look but you know audi's generally look pretty pretty good i don't know Kyle, I think what do you think this is what i think no i think it's what vw have done really well they've taken their time and got the platform right yeah and it's what they look. It's what they had to do. Right. They, well, there was no, move. there was no option to get this wrong. So they were late, <laughs> late. But VW were later to the market than many people wanted, or you know, gave even them credit they for. Said, they said they were going to be in the market, you know, a long time ago, and then yeah, right. The so and even uh, they, screwed the pooch right. for forever and disappointed a lot of people. Yeah, and they and they screwed up the software on the ID three, and it's still and it's still right. not fixed. Um, but well, yeah. it's it's like, it's getting fixed slowly. Some some right. bits are, some bits aren't over here well, in Europe. Well, Volkswagen has new management than than they did when it made all its early uh, yeah. electric vehicle promises that you know it fell through on. So so what they've been really smart in that they can now roll out lots of vehicles like this, and we know like there's now a baseline for the Audi Q four e-tron so we're they're not going back and whilst polestar volvo ultimately owned by geely have got all the resources they need we know there's a baseline that this q4 is going to be of a certain level of car of efficiency of technology of engineering and so that's not up in the air for us now so we're like oh how no what's the styling like and what's it you know do you prefer the audi styling to, to another one whereas with the polestar and with the xc40 they because it's their first attempt they they have got a lot of work to do on the efficiency they've kind of ticked all the right boxes like an 80 kilowatt hour battery yeah it's really quick looks stunning but technologically falls behind in some ways cars like this right yeah totally agree i you know i i love the idea of a really good chassis like the hyundai egmp we'll talk about later on uh, and then this, the MEB chassis, uh, it is all uh, awesome. And we don't know too, too much about uh, Q4 Sportback or the Q4 full one. Uh, uh, but uh, I will say this is going to be a big upgrade from the regular e-tron. The regular e-tron is a fantastic car. It's an okay electric car, pretty poor efficiency, but it's made up with by the charging curve. If this is anything to go by with ID4, it should have a pretty good, uh, efficiency as well and it's going to be an Audi and it's going to be a really nice car so very much looking forward to this thing and uh, I hope they differentiate it from the Volkswagen the Volkswagen ID4 which both Tom and I have driven we've spoken about this on many shows now is extremely comfortable uh, while it can handle okay you can push it it's not a a performance vehicle neither will the Audi be but I expect this to be a little bit better in the corners and on a back road and uh, just have more features, especially here in the U.S., yeah. where ID4 is pretty limited with the offering of features that we can have. We don't get really heads-up display, we don't get augmented reality, any of that stuff. Surely that these will all be all-wheel drive. I can't imagine an Audi doing a two-wheel drive. Well, they yeah. do two-wheel drive here in the U.S. Front-wheel drive offerings for some cars, like okay, the Audi A3. Maybe, maybe then. I just but, think that that would be a point of difference for me. Is that they're all the, all the range of these Audis are you know, all wheel drive, they've got that kind of that quattro heritage they'll lean on for marketing. Well if they do it's if they do, do a, if they do do a, a two wheel drive, it'll be rear wheel drive it, unlike the their other vehicles. So that's yeah, and then, the, and then it's gotta be cheaper and then it's in the VW territory and, and then it's like just make it more premium and sporty and it is that's likely what I would that it will just be all wheel drive from that's what I would do with standpoint. this. Gorgeous. Me too. Yeah. 100%. If they can if they can deliver it at the forty five thousand dollar estimated price it's going to be really hard to justify spending ten thousand more for the Volvo XC40 recharge. Yeah, really. really. If, if if they make this, you know, nice and comfortable inside, and they dress yeah. it up as tip, in typical Audi fashion, and it's all-wheel drive, I I really find it it'll crush the XC40 recharge. And it's unfortunate because I really, it's a beautiful vehicle. It's Volvo did a, a nice job with it, except for the efficiency and the range. The range is is. It's going to be a bitter pill to swallow for some of the customers, I think, that 
You know, they're going to see that EPA range rating. The dealers are going to tell them, oh, yeah, this can go 200 miles per charge. Don't worry. And then they get it. And, and the first time they take it on a long drive in the winter, it's, you know, 140, 150 miles. They're down under 10 percent. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have a lot more confidence that Audi will do uh, a better job with that. And uh, it, if, if this comes in at that price range, this is going to be a really compelling uh, choice. Mm. So Right. Hey, so let's take a look at an another crossover that's coming this uh, this this year, 2021. Uh, the Nissan Aria SUV is supposed to be good for about 300, 300 miles, um, forty thousand per $40,000 price tag to start with. And that's going to be for the front wheel drive version. So they don't they didn't go real wheel drive for the their for their two wheel drive vehicle, which kind of is a shame. Uh, it's built on the Alliance's uh, CMF EV platform, so we may see this v the same platform being used for a Renault. I, I, actually, I believe the, the Mega. Me I don't know how you say it. Megane. Megane means like broken <laughs> in Quebecois French, I think. But uh, okay, Megane. Right, Megane. That's right. Uh, right, and we could see we, maybe could we see a, a Mitsubishi under the, with this platform. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. But uh, actually, it would be under nice underneath the Outlander or something. So yeah, the uh, Ari SUV. Now I know Kyle's not super ex pumped about the looks or the front wheel drive part of it. Mm. But you know, if you've watched us at all, on the, if you've watched yeah, us like, on the podcast before, you know I kind of like the like it more. The interior yeah. is really nice. It's fine, but why would you not, why would you buy this over an ID4 or a Mustang Mach-E? I can't figure it out because uh, sure you can get a front wheel drive small battery for the same price you get a big battery rear wheel drive ID4. Uh, it's not like the ID4 has significantly less space than this car. It's not like the ID4 is significantly uglier. If anything, it looks a lot better. And mm, right. uh, I, I just don't see anything unique or exciting about this offering. It's I, just, they had to make an electric car and they kind of gave it a C plus effort. I, I think the, I think that um, the driving dynamics are going to be above the, or better than the ID4, or at least I, that's what I think. Maybe they won't be, it but. It would be a first for a Nissan product other than GTR, that it's better than its competitors in driving dynamics. I mean, I mean, they have 280, 300s, you know? They don't the handle better than their competitors. Yeah. I guarantee you, you get a 370Z on track. You park that thing next to a Supra. You park that thing next to a, a Cayman, entry-level Cayman. It's going to come dead last. I've spent a yeah. lot of time in them, and they're just heavy and soft and boring. And uh, yeah. GTR is technically okay 12 years ago, but then we haven't seen anything exciting from them. Uh, I, right. I, I fear that – and you have driven the this drivetrain in a Leaf which is right. not this card, but you've driven the motor output and who knows how they're right. going to tune it for this. Uh, again, I, I don't want to be negative on this car, but <laughs> I think I'm kind of I don't want to be right. negative. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to hear you're negative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's good. I, it's fine, but it doesn't do anything for me. I'm sorry. If you look down at the bottom of this, what we're showing some, so we're, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see that we're uh, showing a video of Kyle, uh, dip, uh, Showing us showing the full interior and exterior, giving us a tour, and it's got ninety thousand views on the, on that video, which is more than any other. Uh, I believe I'm not sure if this is on the Inside EVs channel. I believe so. That, I think this is yes, our best is. performing, like walk around video. So somebody's interested in it. A lot of people are interested in it, and I still have yet to have anyone explain to me why. Okay. <laughs> Tom, real quick, Sorry. anything you want to hit on this before we move on? You know, I might not be as harsh as Kyle, but I I, I, I believe, I, I agree with his general gist on this, that it's it's hard to, when you put this up against Model Y, Mach-E, and ID4, uh, I'm trying to figure out where the buyers come from. Now, I know there'll be some people that buy it, for sure, but I I, I almost think that their best play would, it would have been if it was first, but it's going to be the last one to launch. And, and you've got these three really good options that cover like all the different, like you've got ID4 that is just like the sensible, economical family hauler. You've got the Mach-E that, you know, is that, and then you throw in the sportiness and then you've got right. Tesla that kind of does their own thing. Where does this kind of fits between ID4 and Mach-E, I think. 
Um, and there's there's they're loyal Nissan fans that'll go for this. I I just I don't think they're going to get too many um, uh, you know uh, buyers from other brands coming in and saying, you know, okay, I like the ID4, I like the Maki, I like the Model Y, but yeah, I'm going to buy the RI. This this is the car for me. Um, this, uh, this they're going to be like out there, but I don't think. I, I think this will be the lowest selling selling of, of those of the four new, you know, compact electric crossovers that we're getting. I'll tell you who's going to buy it. I've figured it out. It is going to be everyone who owns a 2011 Nissan Leaf. This will be their next car because they right. love their Leaf. This is going to be the next car. step up. And it's a great step up from that. It's, it's not a, a bad car. Up, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's CPS, so. it's thermal management. It's got all the good, you know, driver assistance stuff, nice interior, cool moving center armrest. Like there are a lot, there's a lot to like, but there's so, a lot to not love. So looking at this, I, I'm thinking, so the Mustang Mach-E has this sporty thing going on. The ID4 is like fun and very practical. Uh, this I think has a, like a little bit of touch of class luxury that that's more affordable than the Audi Q4 will have. So I, I think that's his niche, niche, maybe. I don't see anything classy about it. I'm sorry. We can move on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the interior looks quite nice. It's I think yeah, the design the interior design isn't bad. Is, is it's going to be a nice place to be, and a lot of people will, will enjoy that. Um, and, and one last point. Kyle said that he thinks the buyers are going to come from first-generation Nissan Leaf. While I think some of them will, a lot of those first-generation Leaf Customers are mad at Nissan for abandoning Chatamo. Mm. I've seen in a lot of the groups and the forums, like, you know, like upset with them for, for, cause you know, the, the Chatamo uh, people are really loyal to Chatamo for some reason. They really hold on to that and didn't want to see it replaced by CCS. So I, I almost think some of them are going to leave Nissan because of that, because they feel like, they were abandoned, but uh, well, they're going to be leaving Nissan for another CCS vehicle anyway, which yeah. is the right move to go. Yeah, you're right. And maybe I'm overstating that. I just, I'm going on some of the comments and some of the Facebook groups and online forums where I've right. seen people like say like, I can't believe they did this to us. And you know, I'm not going to buy another Nissan now. A lot of those people have moved to, be nice. A lot of those people have moved to, to Tesla. And so that's another thing that the Nissan has to really be careful of. If their all-wheel drive version is too close to the, the model for, uh, Model Y, man, it's hard to hard to hard to, to turn down the Model Y over the Aria. Is what? Nissan uh, coming into the tax credit uh, two hundred thousand number anytime soon? Do we know how far into that they are? Uh, the, yeah, the uh, Nissan owners will be eligible for the tax credit for a little while at least. They do, have, they do have, you know, they do have they some. Space I know left. it's still active. I just don't know at what point. Uh, right. When we're and actually, it with, the, with the new uh, administration coming in, maybe that those uh, uh, that tax credit will be reformed somehow, or be, maybe there'll be some other incentives. I think uh, Pete Buttigieg will be our new uh, transportation. Uh, uh, what do you call a minister? No, mm. <laughs> I'm from Canada originally. I, I think in parliamentary terms. I don't know. Secretary, right? Secretary. <laughs> Secretary, Secretary. That's right. That's right. I, I will just. I, I, I will. I'll note that these all of these cars have pretty good autonomy. I think as much as most people will want. The big question going into 2021. So cars like this that have so that blanked off gloss grill hosts a lot of the sensor suite there's also kind of a really big and quite ugly uh sensor suite up by the uh rear view mirror as well that's kind of huge in this but uh anyway um they're gonna have as much i think as much self-driving as buyers of these kind of cars want they'll drive themselves on highways they'll stay in the lane and they'll probably change lanes with a driver confirmation of, of the indicator stalk and i think for most people that's kind of what they want. Or right. do you want to get an equivalent Tesla, which is probably a little bit more money, but they want to charge you at the moment $10,000 extra. Elon says it's worth $100,000 when full self-driving is working. Like this could be a differentiator. Like I think people would go, you know what? This does enough. I don't need to spend $10,000 for my car to poodle around town. And I, I can do this. Like, I can do this for $10,000. It's fine. So right. it, it's the big unknown of 2021. Have they outpriced full self... Outside of the Tesla bubble, have they put full self-driving at $100,000 uh, 
so far out of people, like a ten thousand dollars out of people's reach. But Elon saying hey, it's going to it's it's going to continue to ramp up and up and up and up and up. I don't. I don't. I, I think these cars will do enough for most people. For for me, on a long journey, I want it to take the strain. I don't mind driving around town. Well, the, actually, twenty twenty twenty. Now that you're talking about autonomous system, twenty twenty one is going to be uh, the year that maybe Tesla reaches uh, level four autonomy. So, you know, you can get in your car and tell it where to go, and it takes you there. I suspect that it's not going to happen, but. You know, I believe Elon has said it's going to happen this year, but he said it's going to happen another year. So anyway, uh, we, we were uh, running short on time, so let's hit some more real quick. Uh, the BMW iX is the uh, is actually the, the the BMW actually maybe to look look for if you have uh, a bit of a budget, three hundred miles of range, eighty thousand dollars coming in late twenty twenty one. Now this has got the the new BMW grill. It's got some beaver teeth happening up front. I don't know. Anyone excited about this yet? And it, it has the worst ad campaign ever attached to a vehicle ever. Oh, yeah? Tell us about it. Yeah. Have you heard about this? BMW uh, Twitter feeds are getting in fights with people about the BMW iX. because, And they're saying, like, okay, Boomer, you're not changing to our new design standards. And it's just so backwards. And mm. as a BMW lover, you have to understand I live and breathe BMWs. This is ugly. And I hate to say that because I love to be embracing of new cars. And I know I've been negative on this show. But I this is be better than the EQB. Uh, no, I like the EQB better. I just don't like the front end of this. And it's not the grills. I've gotten over the grill thing. It's just it's so squished on the front. They need to push the headlights out to the ends and make it feel macho and meaty. And this just seems like someone squished it you know like when you hold a baby and you squish mm. their face that's what this looks like um, i'm kind of the same thought pattern as kyle i really don't like how this looks, and i so wanted to like this vehicle i i, I participated in a uh um uh, an early like review of uh the vehicle years ago when it was just a kind of uh not clay, but it was a, a prop and they asked people to provide feedback on how it looked and uh you know, a focus group. I, I lost that right. term a second ago. And I, I didn't think that they would actually produce it. It pretty much looked exactly like this. So I thought this was just some kind of like, you know, okay, tell us what we did wrong. And most of the people that were there really didn't like it. And I, we're talking about the different uh, um, the styling cues. And it mm -hmm. actually, they didn't they didn't change anything pretty much. This is pretty much how I remember it looking. And uh, it's it's unfortunate. I, I, I was really looking forward to this. And I even thought about possibly getting one uh, and uh, being in BMW's mobility program for years, having a, a couple of I3s, driving the Active E. You know, I kind of feel a little tethered to BMW in their uh, EVs. And this was really the first one that I really was – saying, okay, this could be the vehicle that I get. I never really mm. had interest in the iX3. It wasn't, you know, really purpose designed and everything. And um, But this is the one I was hoping for. And I'm, I'm really disappointed personally. Uh, you know, maybe it'll change my mind once I get in it and drive it. But uh, I think they, you know, I think they missed the mark on this. And uh, judging from what it seems like the reaction from people is that I, I don't, I don't see too many people, uh, you know, online at least saying, wow, this this is awesome, you know. Take my money now, uh, you know. So let's let's uh, let's talk about something that's going to be like the surprise hit of twenty twenty one. How's that? <laughs> okay. The, the surprise hit is coming. Up, All right, uh, remains to be seen. Are you ready? Yeah. Hyundai Ionic Five on the new. I don't think we're dedicated be very surprised platform. By this. You don't think that's going to be the big hit? No. No, I think it's going to be the efficiency king, but I don't yeah. think anyone will want it. Really? Yeah. So, so we don't have a good picture of the production version yet. We have uh, pictures of it in camo. So I don't know, Martin, if you can show us like the concept version. See, there, there's the camo version. So we kind of see it's kind of hard to tell what's going on there. It's kind of roundish. Almost yeah. reminds the, me of the, 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 30 the, 40, a bit. the 45 concept we need to look for. Um, right. And, uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a good looking car. I mean, like the concept car was all sorts of crazy. It was like a lounge right. inside and it was their vision for how we'll travel in the future. And it's like sitting in your front room with big plush carpets and all that kind of stuff. But actually the car itself, pretty good. Really crisp lines, but it's on the, uh, the new EGMP platform, which, uh, you know, should has, has great specs. 
I'm not sure if we have those specs to pull up real quick, but yeah. I'm excited the about okay. this platform. The, the, the platform is good, though, because think about the efficiency of Kona and Ionic now being built on combustion chassis. They're insanely efficient. If anything, I think the Ionic might be the most efficient vehicle on sale, if not now the new Model 3 with the heat pump may have matched it. Uh, but it's right. just insane. So here you go now, ground up. The, the Ionic has a very small battery. So, I mean, it's, it, plus it's, it is efficient and it's relatively, it's not a crossover. So it's a sedan. So it's got a more aerodynamic profile. So it, it does, yeah, it, it is more efficient, but there's, you know, it's got a few advantages that help it be that efficient. But the regular Kona, Kona and the, the Kia Nero, uh, yeah. And actually, what, what we're talking about, the Kia CV is uh, the sister to the Onyx 5. And we haven't really seen a whole lot of, or heard a whole lot of news about that. We've seen a couple spy shots of the Kia CV charging and the original concept of that was the Kia Imagine, which is, you know, very different from the Ionic 5 uh, concept and also kind of a little out there. But the production version, we can tell it's going to have some of those weird headlights as well. But these two, technically, they should be pretty close. It would be interesting to see how they're differentiated once they, we can actually see what they look like inside and out. Any ideas? Any any ideas about the uh, differentiation, Kyle? How do you, how do you think they can do it, Hyundai Hyundai Kia? Look, who knows how they're going to do it? They they've been straddling this weird world of having to differentiate their vehicles for ten years now. I think right. they're doing a great job. I actually love. I'm a big fan of their combustion vehicles, their new hybrids, their plug-in hybrids. I think they have incredible quality, great design. Uh, you know, most re like just this past week, we tested the Kia Sorento hybrid, not a plug in, but awesome car. So I, I think the company is in the right direction. I think they are out to win and uh, don't underestimate them. I just don't think it's an emotional, exciting car like a Rivian, for example, because you're not envisioning yourself driving a Hyundai Ionic thinking, oh, this will be the best thing ever. You're thinking, oh, I'm going to be in the Honda E ripping through the city, right? Or I'm going to be in a smart car jumping it off a cliff like who knows but mm. there's nothing emotional about this car it's just a device from a to b and it's going to be a really good device okay well sp speaking of rivian uh that's the other big thing for 2021 electric pickup trucks are coming and it looks like rivian is going to be the first it looks like uh the r1t uh, 300 miles of range seventy five thousand dollars uh deliveries happening in about june um, they had a really great little uh, video for Christmas. I don't know if you can see that, Martin. Uh, should be a link to the YouTube uh, Christmas spot. Yes, and it has a, you can plug it in. Lots of lights, and it will power them for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So electric pickup trucks, man. It's kind of and this is the the Rivian R one T can has one motor per, per wheel, so you get torque vectoring to the extent that you can. On, on a soft surface like dirt or sand, you can spin around in a circle, tank turns. Not like nobody else can do that. You excited? It all it all it all ticks the right boxes. I'm pumped. I can't wait for you know. And and this is something I wanted to get in as well. 2021 is going to be the year of comparisons for us. It's going to be Aria XC40, Polestar 2, Mustang Mach E, Model Y, blah 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 blah. That bunch. Then we'll have the Ionic, Honda E, uh, you know, whatever else is in that small category, that's ID3. That's going to be mostly a European series. So we're going to be going over to Europe this year, doing a lot of testing of European EVs. We'll probably spend two or three months alone in Europe is the plan, just testing European EVs. And then we'll have the pickup truck wars, Cybertruck, Lordstown, Rivian, uh, you right. name it. We got Nicola Badger was canceled. Too bad. Uh, <laughs> too many to name. And, uh, you know, so many, so many cool things that, that are going to be coming up. Personally, uh, I, I, I don't know. Do we have any more vehicles to go through on the list or can we talk about Rivian for a half a second? Uh, go ahead. We have the Rivian R1S also on the list here. So if you want, that's the uh, yeah, SUV. We'll combine them. Yeah. I am the most excited about these vehicles uh, personally. I think these are yeah. the most exciting vehicles of 2021 because you have to uh, you know, imagine where I live here in Colorado, it's the gateway to the Rockies. I'm literally the last town before you get to the giant mountains. They're right out my window. And everyone comes here in their lifted sprinter vans and they're driving up into the mountains, right? And they're going camping and they're exploring and you can tell they're packed and ready to go for two, three, four, five weeks off in the wilderness. 
this is the right vehicle to do it. And Rivian is building out an adventure charging network so we can charge in the mountains. Now I'm gonna start getting into that project probably next year as well, uh, working with Colorado, trying to figure out how can we get chargers with battery packs and solar on popular trails that you might be driving. Um, but uh, this is really the, the biggest emotional buy of 2021. It's the car that most people envision themselves going off in the wilderness with the dogs, with the family, with the tent on the back and going for a blast. I can't wait. And uh, of course, you're going to see plenty of videos with us doing these types of things. And, um, you know, Cybertruck versus Rivian versus all the other ones. It's going to be a blast. And I think this is the one I would choose. Now I'm thinking about right now in this moment. I'm not sure about tomorrow, but today now I want this pickup truck with a gear tunnel that you can stick all kinds of things in. I think the gear tunnel actually has as much uh, volume as the, it has a huge trunk, and I think it has a very similar volume there. I'd and go with the R1S, the SUV. Uh, and uh, I was kind of thinking what is probably the best car for us, and I, I was sort of settling in on the uh, Land Rover Defender 110, the new one. Uh, it's not electrified yet, of course, but I was like, this is kind of the defender of electric vehicles. It captures that same spirit. I just love it. I think in that color combo right there, green yeah. with the snow, I love it. Yeah. Actually, I do like the R1S too. It's grown on me. At first, I'm, I'm not really a big you know, crossover SUV person anyway. Um, but yeah, I do like the way this the short overhangs front and back. And I know that the capable, it's like a supercar, you know, pretty much like the, the performance of these things is, is amazing. And this will also have tank turn, I believe. It's the same platform as yeah, a why wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 It'll climb like a billy goat. Yeah. All right. Mm. So uh, the, the biggest story to me in 2021, talking about Rivian coming out, honestly, is the fact that we're finally getting the vehicles, electric vehicles in all sizes and shapes that that the consumers want. Now, you know, for years, many of us have been talking about electric vehicles, advocating for electric vehicles. And I'm sure you guys have heard, just as I have, why aren't we selling more of these cars? If everybody wants electric cars, you know, why are they 1% of the overall market or 2%, whatever it was? And other than Tesla, honestly, for years, many of the electric cars were small hatchbacks that went 100 miles. You know, yeah, recently we got that up over 200 miles, which is which is great. But we haven't had vehicles in all shapes, shapes and sizes. We haven't had the types of vehicles that really excite consumers um, other than right. Tesla. And that's why Tesla's really done so well. They they went out there and put built a 300-mile SUV. You know, they 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 built a, a beautiful luxury long range sedan. Nobody was, when the Tesla came out with the Model S, nobody was making a full size electric sedan, you know, let alone one that could go, you know, 250, 300 miles per charge. But 2021 is going to be defined by the fact that we're getting vehicles now, electric vehicles in all shapes and sizes and the right. pickup trucks and SUVs at least I know here in, in the U.S., they, it's just a staple. They're everywhere. Martin might not be able to appreciate that as much in Europe, but they're, go, you pull into a parking lot here in the U.S., Martin, and all you see is a row. It looks like an SUV commercial, and uh, it, it's just what everybody buys. And uh, if you can afford one, if you can't afford one, what do you get? Like a small crossover, like ID4, like Model Y. The, 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 that's what everybody – nobody's buying little – hatchbacks. That's why Volkswagen didn't bring the ID3 here. Why Honda isn't bringing the Honda E here. You know, the, the but we're at least here in the US, we're getting the vehicles in full electric form that people want. And to me, that's what defines 2021. I can't wait for Rivian. I can't wait to sit in the first electric pickup truck and do a media drive on it and then buy one. I've, I've said it many times here. I'm buying an electric pickup truck as soon as I can, as soon as I have the ones that I want available, I want to take a look at what's available. My Toyota will, will get traded in and, and then finally I'll be fully electric. But um, that's to me, that's the story. We're talking here about 2021. That's the big story, right. not an individual vehicle. It's that right. we're now finally getting all the vehicles in all the shapes and sizes. So if you want to, if you want an electric crossover, you want an electric pickup truck, sedan, no convertibles yet, but you know, fingers crossed. Uh, but pretty much, you know, most most of the vehicles that you might be interested in, there's likely going to be an electric option for you. Maybe maybe several. 
So that's really great. And that's, yeah, like you said, it's been a long time coming, man. We man, just need you, You've been at this for a long time too, Tom. So it's like this whole thing is finally coming to fruition and, you know, it's kind of great to see. Uh, so let's hit a few more cars real quick. Uh, we also have the Lordstown Endurance pickup truck coming this year. 250 miles, $52,500 in-wheel motors. Um, brand new company again, but should be interesting. It's a, a bit of an odd company and an odd approach. They have uh, they bought a factory and they're uh, sort of renovating it rather than you know scratching everything and building it you know building it up. Oh, the uh, Hummer EV pickup truck is should also make it by the end of the year and that's that's man i really want this to work for for gm but and i know they sold out of the initial vehicles so uh, i don't know hummer ev i know any quick thoughts on that kyle uh too expensive it's a hummer and doesn't do anything for me really i mean look you're gonna just see everyone who's a crossfitter in miami driving this thing that's the market Cross, Miami CrossFit is okay. Yeah, I, I think it's going to sell. I think it's going to sell. I think people, uh, you know, the people that I've communicated with like it. Uh, I know it's a, I know it's super expensive, but the original Hummer was super expensive, and GM sold a bunch of them. Uh, right. You know, once this you you get down to the uh, less expensive versions under a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's what look. Load up a Ford Limited F one hundred and fifty pickup truck with all the options. Everything. Oh, like, they're hundred grand. Yeah. So. The, I don't know why people wouldn't go for the Hummer as, as opposed to that. Uh, so yeah, I think this is going to surprise people and sell better than mo most people expected. Can and I bring up a point? It's a super truck. I'm, okay. I'm go sorry ahead. that we are so lo low on time, but this is an important point to bring up. I don't believe electric pickup trucks will be good at towing. Right. I, I mean, think we are going to have such massive range concerns that you're going to see 600 mile Cybertruck, whatever it's 500 miles, you know, 300 mile Rivians, 400 mile Rivians. These turn into 100 mile vehicles when you tow with them. Uh, maybe the hundred. The, 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 the weight of it, what you're towing. I mean, it's, it's mostly the the arrow. It is mostly the aerodynamic drag, right. not so much the weight. But right. then you pull into a charger, and most chargers do not have an easy place to plug in when you're charging. So not only do you need to charge more often, you won't be able to recharge as easily. Therefore, I'm worried about the electric pickup truck market for people who use their trucks for real work. Uh, and that's going to be big testing for us uh, in 2021 as, you know, how much does we have to get a standardized trailer, a standardized weight, maybe different types of trailers. It's going to get complicated. We're going to figure it out and we're going to do it. But I think people are overestimating their towing capabilities with electric trucks. That's my thought. I'd love to hear how I'm wrong in the comments. So let me know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And towing, yeah. Towing is a big deal. Whenever any vehicle comes out, you know, people in the, in the inside EVs forum want to know about, will, will it tow, you know, even more than will it drift or will it, whatever, you know, towing is always up there, even if we don't use it that often. So definitely a concern. Um, what else? So the other big GM thing this year is the bolt refresh, which is it's still a bolt, but it's going to look outside and inside like a different car. Same size kind of shape. It's going to look so much nicer. And then the slightly larger bolt EUV is coming. That's looks like the bolt, but slightly, slightly larger. Should be interesting how that actually, how that splits. People are going to buy EUV over the regular E. I don't know. If, I'm not sure that there's uh enough of a distinction or advantage of, we'll see what the difference in price is, I guess. Um, what else do we have on the list? Okay, the VW ID4 GTX, so the spicy version uh, is coming of that. So that's good to know. Um, They're calling I, it the GTX and not the so. R? Yeah, I, 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 that's what I believe, yeah. Uh, huh. ID, and the ID5, which is basically the ID4, but coupified, more a coupe shape. So this is that as well. Um, and Ford E-Transit is coming this year in late 2021. That's uh, more of a commercial vehicle, but, you know, still great to see. Hummer, uh, super sports cars, the Lotus, Evaja? Evaya. Evaya, thank you. Right, Evaya. Uh, that's 250 miles, $2.5 million. It's kind of out there in design. It's pretty neat looking. I don't know. Uh, I love personally, it. 
my car of the year is the Remax C2. It's uh, there's the Evaya on the screen there. If you're looking, I love that the rear view actually it's pretty impressive. Kind of that's kind crazy. Of crazy, kind of crazy out there. Yeah, I think that's what you're paying for. But for me, for my money, if I had that kind of money, it's the Remax C2, which is sold out or just about sold out. Um, if it's not completely sold out, and I'm not sure actually, this the name of it is going to be changed. I believe when they finally reveal the complete production version of it they're just building the they just started building the pre-production series of the of this and if you haven't seen it yet i really highly, highly recommend even if you, you know you can't afford this car most of us can't afford this car but still check out this video because the the last um, it's on the remac uh, youtube channel mondays with remac with mate um, and he goes over the goes over a lot of the things about this car that you haven't seen before is like the kyber, carbon fiber uh, chassis um, and it tells how it shows how they connect everything to that chassis and this being the pre-series uh, pre-production series of vehicles that they're building right now you can see i think on the interior the passenger side now has a little bit of a screen there for them as well so there's a few touches i don't know it's it's impressive it's great engineering, and uh, I just encourage you to check that out. And of course, uh, finally, the only thing we haven't talked about now, if we've, if we've missed any any cars, let us know, and you know maybe we'll bring it up next week. So let us know in comments, but also the Candy K27, K23 should be available for sale this year. I'm not sure. I'm not Kyle, convinced. <laughs> no? I don't They're think so. Too, by, by a short seller, I believe. Look, it's gonna be uh, it, it's gonna be a miracle if they can sell them. If they can sell them, we're buying one. I don't right. think they can sell them. Anyway, the only thing we haven't talked about, which isn't really a car, Tesla Semi. Pretty pumped for that. Oh, yeah. Also, is Roadster twenty twenty two? I think so. Or twenty one. All right. Anyway, hopefully we hear more things about the Roadster. Yeah, I, I'm excited for Tesla's future product. I just want to uh, to see them. I hope we see faster charging this year. I hope we see better focus on charging curves. We maybe next episode we'll have a wish list of the things we'd like to see uh, in EVs for companies and manufacturers to work on. But uh, look, it's going to be an exciting year. It's it's our first big year in the electric vehicle world, I think. So semi coming out, I just want to say it's so with the semi coming out, they're going to need semi chargers or mega chargers. I think that's I forget the terminology. They're going to mega have. chargers. Yep. Okay, so th there's your fast charging for towing for pickup trucks. If they can adapt to a mega charger, that that sort of output of charger, then I think that's your you know, at least some somewhat of a solution for the towing thing. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of other ideas about that, but we'll we'll see that for the future. Yeah, Tesla Semi. It'd be nice if it comes out this year. I'm not sure if it will. Um, the Cybertruck was supposed to come out this year, and it looks like that's going to be pushed just into 2022 a bit now. So yeah. That's a bit of a disappointment, but yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, so uh, I'd like to th that brings us to the end of our show. I'd like to thank you all for joining us, and it's going to be a really great year. And hopefully, we'll have lots of podcasts to talk about all the electric vehicles coming this year. And I'd like to thank you for um, following us on and watching our, our uh, podcast. It's you know I greatly appreciate it. It's been man. How many, 30, 39 episodes. It's more than half a year at least. So yeah. Anyway, I'm excited. Any, anything real quick y'all want to talk about for 2021? I can't wait no. to do all the comparisons. I can't wait to do, uh, you know, 20 car battles, basically 10 car battles, uh, European testing. It's going to be fun. Martin's going to have to come and test some cars with us. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'll be yeah, great. We look forward to seeing you over here as well. I want to get in the great. electric pickup and SUVs. That's what I. That's what I'm looking forward to. I can't can't yeah. wait to test them out. All right. Well, let us know in comments what you're looking forward to. Uh, thank you all for joining us. If you have any comments on today's show, uh, like what you're looking forward to, uh, you can comment on the Inside EVs podcast post, the YouTube comment section, or on the Inside EVs forum podcast thread. And you can find the follower panelist on Twitter, Tom Malagni, as that. Tomalog, Martin Lee is at EV News Daily. Kyle Connor is at Out of Spec. I'm at Dominic underscore Y. Click subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications. And we'll see you all again next week. Happy New Year and ciao. Happy New Year.